Hello, this is Terry Gender Bender of the Butcherettes. You are watching Ambi, here in Toronto, from a Mexican heart. Hey everyone, it's Alicia from Ambi, and I would like to welcome you to our interview with Terry from Le Butcherette. Hello! Thank you, thank you again for having me. Of course, welcome back. Oh, thank you. Round three. For receiving me. <laughs> well received. Always, always, you're, you're always you're looking beautiful also thank when you, you receive you. me. Thank you. Thank I like how we're saying receive me. <laughs> <laughs> such a funny ring to you. You receive me. We receive each other. <laughs> we are here in Toronto tonight at Rebel as you yeah. were touring with At The Drive-In. Yeah. How's yeah. everything going oh down? Oh my gosh, it was... It's going so far. It's been amazing. Just on a personal side, I I, I was telling you that I, I got the flu. Yeah, I got when the it flu. kicked off. The, right, the, the first day I got super sick, and so then I have that worry that, oh, I'm gonna get my band sick, and and now my band is gonna kind of avoid me a little bit. I don't take it personal, you know. Every time I cough, I have to I do this, and then I take the hand sanitizer. But putting that aside, it's been a, amazing touring with these guys. Um, learning from their process, their warm-ups, their sound checks, and, and just watching their shows live, just seeing what little details they add. And it's always different. That's what I love about them, too. Well, last yeah. time we spoke, we dive, dove right into A Raw Youth, latest record yeah. release. But since then, you've released a new single, which is pretty cool. Oh, the thank you. The single is called My Mother Holds My Only Lifeline. Now, when oh. I first heard it, I was trying to be fairly, you know, not biased. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to listen to this lyrically. Yeah. And for me, with my parents, I always feel like I'm doing my best with my job. But sometimes yeah. you, there's a little doubt. Like, are they as proud of me as I think they might be? Oh, there's is that kind doubt. of where the song stems from, you oh, and your mother? Gosh, definitely doubt. I always trying to live up to an expectation somehow. And, and... And I love my mother to death, but she's she was born with two personalities. Like during the daytime, she's very giving, makes breakfast. But when it's nighttime, when the, when the moon comes out, I'm, I'm not exaggerating. She changed Je Dr. Jekyll and Dr. Hyde, and and it's like I don't even know this person, so I'm trying to please that person that that's uh, mean and and I, I don't. Need, it, it, it sounds a little weird, but she even howls at the moon. Like, that's how it affects her. And I grew up my whole life thinking that was normal. Yeah. And maybe that's why, that's probably w where I get it from. Like, the onstage thing. Pe some people think it's, like, antics. But no, I truly get that from from, from my household. You know, from my, my mother really contagious that to me. Contagious that to me. <laughs> <laughs> Spanglish. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, yeah, doubt and, and just trying to just fill that void of of what normal is because no one has a normal family really yeah. at the end of the day and I think there's beauty to that. Well I also want to talk about Crystal Fairy, the yeah. super group that you have with Omar Rodriguez Lopez and the Melvins. Damn. How is it putting that latest record together because it is killer. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. That was like drinking water and I don't say it in an arrogant way. I mean it because we all got, a, I think the hardest part is just to get along with someone and and so when we first met up in the, during the tour, the Butchrets were touring with the Melvins Wait, well, that's how we met? Yeah. Yeah. It's not like forever it's ago. It's all connected. It's all connected. <laughs> and and so from there, it just stemmed from just offstage great chemistry. And and when we all had off time, we just gravitated towards the studio. And and without even having a pretension of, oh, okay, we have to make a record. No, it was like, oh, let's, let's make some music. And before we realized it, we made six songs in L.A. And then we were like, well, why don't you come over to El Paso where we have family, we have a studio there. And cultural exchange, in other words, and so they came to the uh, to record the other half in El Paso, and it was so much fun. It was plus the Melvins. I grew up listening to yeah. them my whole life, so it was like yeah. it's it's still surreal even talking <laughs> about it. Apparently, your mom also cooked dinner for them. Yeah, what did she yeah, make? yeah. She made well from my father's side. Um, they're Spanish, so she made a tortilla española, which is like uh, potatoes with eggs and onion. Okay. And and for for and from the Mexican side that my mother is from, uh, chilaquiles, which is uh, like cut up tortillas, um, a little bit uh, crunchy with hot um, salsa. But it's it's not like that you know common sauce that you buy in the grocery yeah. store. She made it from scratch. You know the chiles with delicious uh, tomato juice and mixed it all in. Nice uh, Celtic sea salt. Uh, just think about it, it makes me hungry. <laughs> me too. <laughs> A couple interviews say, down. We're going to have to go there. And that's yeah. like our next interview will take yeah. place there. We'll, we'll fly out to El Paso. Yeah, have her cook <laughs> us from tortilla española to chilaquiles and y mole. Oh, my God. The oh, mole she yes. makes. Oh, for people who don't know what mole is, it has a, it's like a like bittersweet chocolate yeah. on sauce. For, it could be on chicken. goes on chicken sometimes. But, you know, I'm a, I'm a vegetarian. I'm, I'm one of those annoying people that have the luxury to choose their diets. 
So, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I put it on, like, uh, chile relleno, like, with mole instead. Yeah. What would you say is your favorite home-cooked meal? Because I'm sure when you're on the road so much, I yeah. mean, you mentioned, ha- what, what did you have for dinner? For dinner, falafel. Falafel. And yeah. I'm sure that's something that's common, yeah. right? It's just easy to pick up. So, yeah. when you miss those home-cooked meals, which ones? Oh, chilaquiles. Then? Okay, so that's It could be any time of the day, because it's usually a breakfast meal, but any time of the day. Like, for dinner, I can have it. Every day. And you know what? And also pho. I love Vietnamese pho. Okay. Yeah. But I, I'm not good at making that. I have to go to the, <laughs> the store, to, well, to the, the restaurant to buy it, you know. So it'll pick up delivery, pick up service. <laughs> <laughs> There's a song on the record that stood out to me called Vampire Xmas. Yeah. Oh. And, I mean, I know you grew up listening to a lot of punk, but this is mm. fairly metal. Like, this is a really heavy song. Like, almost Judas Priest, Iron Maiden. Like, yeah. it is badass. Thank what you. was it like going out of your comfort zone and Ooh. putting that together? Yeah, at first I was like, how am I going to do this? Because the music, that, that song was written by Buzz. So I was like, oh my gosh, how am I going to... So instead of just worrying myself about how am I going to do this, I was just like, you know what, screw it. Let's have a good time. Like, well, what, what would you do like in, in, in a made-up world? So I pictured myself with a big flag, kind of like Iron Maiden. You know how okay, at the beginning yeah. of their show, Absolutely. they have the big flag. So I was like on a mountain in my head with the big flag. <laughs> and all of a sudden, it just, I just started improvising the, mil- the melody, and it just came out. Ho, ho, ho. La, 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 la. And it just, I was like, cool. It fits the music. That's amazing. Yeah, you just have, kind of just think outside of your fear, because fear just makes... It, it boxes you, a, you in. Yeah, it boxes you in. It gives you a reason to be bored. I like that. Yeah. Fear gives you a reason to be bored. I'm I think, I, think I stole that for someone. Did you? Yeah, I think I stole that from Garbage. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Shirley. Yes, always. <laughs> <laughs> you revealed in a recent interview that you swear a fair bit. Yes. You, you oh guys like to, especially when you're kind of like the creative juices are flowing. There's a lot of cursing going on a when you're lot. putting that record together. And I just think that shows that my, my limitation for vocabulary, because I'm sure there's so many different words to say you know, shite, or, or, or fudge, or, you know, like... Darn it. Darn it. Darn it is beautiful. You know, it's old. It's, it's from the 50s, right? I mean, I don't know the, the origin, but, <laughs> yeah. I mean, fact checker, checkers, please tell please us. Please leave us in the Darn comments. it. Where does darn it come from? Because <laughs> yeah. that one time, uh, I, I forgot what movie, someone said, damn it. Frankly, I don't give a damn. Oh, what is that movie? Frankly, darling, I don't give a damn. And that was controversial at a the big time no-no. yeah that was controversial at the time like holy crap I like you're, you're about to say holy shit <laughs> 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 that was amazing timing <laughs> which curse which would you say you use the most the most oh i, I think man that's a good one i think shit okay shit. you don't have to be quiet okay <laughs> don't, so don't worry because i've said it so many times on like for example public radio yeah you can't Oh my, and it's so embarrassing because then the producer comes in and he's like, and then it's awkward and you're like, oh, I'm sorry, you get the nervous <laughs> laughter. Yeah, no, but yeah, yeah, it's just, it's ingrained sometimes in, in, in movies and in, in TV shows and even in books and comic books, you see sh- the, sh- the word shit everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Well, something I noticed that, you know, that I didn't realize the first two interviews is in a lot of your press photographs, like you'll be sitting down and then you'll have high heels on, so you're rocking the red high heels, and then like you'll have your foot up over here and your high heels, yeah, like, you're, like you're so flexible. <laughs> <laughs> Did you take any sort of gymnastics or anything? Because you're always constantly like, you. even on stage, you're doing these crazy <laughs> jumps. And <laughs> yeah, I wish when I was little, I wanted to do gymnastics and, and uh, ballet, but it just the opportunity wasn't available. Yeah. It's just, yeah. I, and, and, and I was this close. I, I, we were in Chiapas, Mexico. I remember being like five years old and, and we were, they gave us like a free class. Well, they, they told my parents that I could have a free class and I, and I assisted one and I just, I, I saw the little girl ballerinas with their, with their, I don't even know what they're called, the, the, baller, the ballet shoes. Yeah. It's tippy toe ones that I wanted one so bad, but my mom was like, no, we don't have the budget for it, you know? And I understand, you know, it's, it's hard. It's hard raising a lot of kids, you know, well, three. Three, three's not a lot, right? It's, it's a decent amount. Yeah, decent amount, yeah. Because, you know, well, in the old days, I, might, I don't know about your grandparents, but my grandparents had, like, ten so children. So many siblings. Yeah. <laughs> so many. So hopefully one day I'll have ten children. Well, the other day you posted a photograph, and it was of St. Vincent with Kimbra, who I know oh. you idolize, and I think it just said, Empowerful Woman, or something along those yeah. lines. I told you this when we last spoke, but, like, you inspire me so much. Every time I see you perform and I see you in my feed, I'm like, she's just kicking ass. So Thank to you, you, who are some of those other people right now that are just kind of keeping you motivated? Oh, yeah, well, Kimbra's definitely one. St. Vincent, uh, Mon Lafert. Uh, uh, wow, you definitely, have you? Have you no. She's up and coming. Well, she's been at it for a long time, but she's definitely, she's finally getting justice served. She's exploding in, in, in Mexico, and she just did a, her first tour over the whole U.S. 
and oh my god just the music that she plays it's a, it's very i don't even know what kind, like folk uh with with old ballads from chile and her voice is just something else like she, she can just sing without the mic still very powerful and her presence her stage presence is just breathtaking mon laferte and Benyan, but she moved from chile to mexico and it just people just started picking up on it more and it's it, it, you know that saying where you're no one's a prophet in their own land and she had to leave her her land to be appreciated again and, and when she left you know people started you know uh, was falling in love with, with her rightfully so and so mon laferte is natalia laforcade who's an amazing also con- uh, composer that she just won actually the Grammy. She won the oh, Grammy. Okay. Uh, I think that was last year though. This year it was uh, Ile from Calle 13, another great Puerto Rican. Uh, she, she's a she's Puerto Rican uh, composer, and she's doing fantastic. There, there's so many talented people, you know, that inspire me from everywhere. Yeah, I'm leaking because of the the, the cold is still it's in still me. So like in there. like there's like like a long like <laughs> gusano, like a I'm warm. Leaking. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, even these mistakes, you know, the leakage, it, it inspiring sometimes it too. Happens. You want to stop it. You want to. I like yeah. it. I love how normal you are. Like it's so, it's so endearing. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Of course. Because well, sometimes you feel like a freak in your head. I don't know. Do you ever feel uh, like a freak sometimes? All the time. Oh my gosh. Okay, that makes it. You're not of alone. Us. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. Yeah. So to wrap things up, I was wondering if you could give me your best kazoo vocal or warm up. You know, what what do you okay. do before you go on stage? Well. Normally, I mean, right now, Alejandra, uh, our current drummer, she's been on my ass about it. Like, you need to warm up, girl. You need to take care of yourself because uh, we came back from Europe and I, and I got sick again. I, I have a horrible immune system, but um, I didn't take care of myself, so I lost my voice. And she, that's when she was telling me, hey, if you warm up, you'll get more uh, resistant. So basically, it's doing this, like... <laughs> that's like the beginning part of the okay. warming up. And then... Um, I, mean, I guess on, on, on YouTube you could find uh, like quick warm ups. You, you put you put the phone in your ear. Or the, or and you kind of go along to it. Go along with it with the with the piano, yeah. And uh, and then it just it really does work. I mean I haven't done it every day yet, but I'm gonna try to make a habit out of it because it does work. And and, and I used to be one of those people that said no, why warm up? But yeah, yeah I mean it, same applies for drummers. You know you gotta warm up before a show. Warm up your arms. Eat bananas. Um, the same with guitarists or, or bassists before a show, warm up those fingers, do finger exercises. Actually, our old bass player, uh, Jamie, she told me that her uh, music teachers showed her finger exercises, and this is what they have, they have to do. Okay. Anything I could do that. I was thinking of the thing you were doing. I think my voice yeah. would crack. They're like, <laughs> <laughs> like, no. <laughs> you're, you've you've yeah. done it many nights, no, but you, no. you already have it down. Yeah. Oh, thank you. You're thank welcome. You. Oh, my. You're, you're making my day very nice right now. <laughs> Yeah, like, I, so sweet. I just want to say thank you nope. so much for joining me again, Terry. <laughs> thank I feel you. like three times a charm to bring oh. it in again. And, and hopefully more to come, right? <laughs> of course, of well, course. Thank you so much. Thank you. And, and, and sorry about like the, the, the gusano, the warm, <laughs> well, and, well, and the smell. You know, you know. I didn't smell anything. God. So maybe, God. I'm just, maybe I was just lucky. Who yes, knows? you were very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> one more hug, one more hug. Of course, bring it oh. in again. So you can smell it in this time. <laughs> smell it okay, maybe good. it's kind of taking that way yeah exactly yeah. i think i think the evil is here it's that <laughs> leakage here evil here <laughs> sounds like a new song yeah. yeah leakage here evil there everyone will always stare because they, they will stare you know if you're falling apart they stare people like to see disasters well, i just want to say thank you <laughs> thank you yeah, i can't get anything out because i'm laughing so hard inside <laughs> And remember to everybody viewing, you can visit us at musicvlogger.com. I gotta get it together. (laughs) (laughs) It's surreal. It's surreal. Interviews, features, videos, and so much more. See you next time.